צה"ל מתיר בשעה זו לפרסום על דבר מותו של חטוף נוסף, סרן דניאל פרץ, זכרו לברכה. On October 7th, Captain Daniel Perez was a 22-year-old commander of a tank unit stationed at Nahal Oz base on the Gaza border. Along with thousands of Israelis, Daniel was called upon to put his life on the line on perhaps the most fateful day in Israel's modern history. Taken hostage with two crew members, Daniel was declared dead 163 days later. His body has yet to be returned to Israel for burial. His father, Rabbi Doron Perez, the executive chairman of World Mizrahi, takes us through Daniel's journey from a self-focused teenager to a self-actualizing young man to a selfless hero. Daniel was the most energetic, ADHD, fun-loving teenager you could ever imagine. I think he was the happiest when he was with his friends. He had so many friends from every stage of life, from South Africa, Israel, religious, secular backgrounds, all types. Daniel, I think, was the best friend you could have, so beloved and so invested. His older brother, Yonatan, and him were the best of friends, close since they were small, growing up together. They would play, have fun, and fight with each other. And indeed, when they grew older, they connected about challenges in the army, life, and leadership. Deep bonds of brotherly love. One, two, three, salute. Yes, you're not saying the Shema, man. Just Okay, guys, show us how you march. March around the room. Let's see the soldiers march. He absolutely loved sport, especially high-octane extreme sports, whether it was being a super-fast ice skater, wakeboarding, whether he was going full speed over a ramp, doing 360-degree flips in the air. No one loved high-octane energy more than Daniel. Eventually, during a wakeboarding accident, he fell tearing some ligaments and cartilages in his knee. Despite operations and nine months of physical therapy, Daniel was disqualified from combat. He would have to give up in his dream of being in the Sayeret Commando of Golani. Despite being clever and quick in the uptake, Daniel would not have been satisfied with a desk job. He felt he needed to direct his prodigious energies towards combat, so he actually fought with the army doctors for months on end until they raised his physical profile just high enough so he could enlist to the tank corps. Daniel absolutely loved the tank, both its complexity and its power. He became the disciplined, highly professional soldier, always striving for excellence. I saw him as a young man involved in self-actualization, wanting to be the best that he could be. Indeed, he was selected to be a commander and was chosen as the outstanding commander of the entire course. He continued thereafter to officer's course where he excelled as well and then received his own tank crew known as Tsevet Peretz. He was then offered to participate in the next stage of development as an officer, to be a company commander. In fact, one of my last conversations with him was about his deliberations whether or not to continue further in the army. I felt that Daniel was at the best stage of his life that I'd ever seen him, and I was so impressed with his thought process and maturity. Then came October 7th. I have to admit that I thought Daniel's primary motivation was self-actualization and self-fulfillment, personal achievement, and not selflessness for a greater cause. How wrong I was. A great gift we received from Daniel was his diary that was returned from Nachalo's base, a diary we knew nothing about. Now that he was an officer, commanding soldiers for the first time and making literally life and death decisions, he began to be deeply introspective. On the opening page, he wrote a heading, the things I think about before going to sleep. Here, he asked himself a question, why am I here? To this, he answered that since he had gone to Poland in grade 11, he understood the price that Jewish people had paid when they did not have the ability to defend themselves. Now that he's a soldier and a commander, he felt he had this duty to defend his people. And then, on a separate line, he wrote a charge to himself. Im lo ani azmi. If not me, then who? 
It was this very sentiment of taking full responsibility for others that was exactly what drove Daniel on the most fateful day, not only in his life, but of the Jewish people in our generation. On that day, Daniel and his tank crew fought valiantly for two and a quarter hours against the first wave of Nukba terrorists. He then noticed tens of motorbikes crossing the border, the second wave, each armed with an RPG. He could have remained in the safety of his tank position and fired shells at them, killing some, but knowing all well that the majority would certainly get through. Fully aware that he was the last line of defense, Daniel did not hesitate for a moment. Without any concern for his safety, he left his position and charged straight at them. Shelling, shooting, zigzagging, trampling, Tsevet Peretz did all they could to stop every single terrorist until eventually his tank was overrun, where he was shot, killed, and taken hostage. What's really, really special about this day and really inspires me personally is next to each grave of any halal, any person or soldier that has fallen for the state of Israel, there's an Israeli soldier that comes, speaks to the parents, supports them, really just gives them respect for what they have done for the country. Daniel Ish Hamudot, Daniel the Beloved, that was what we wrote both on his bar mitzvah invitation and sadly on his grave. We also engraved three additional phrases that we believed encompassed who he was. He stuck to the mission at hand, fought with bravery and saved many lives. You know, in looking back, I see how a young teenager, as teenagers are, focused on himself as the center of his life how he grew into a self-actualizing 20-year-old focused on personal achievement and then emerged as a courageous, selfless 22-year-old hero focused only on the well-being of others, genuine Masirut Nefesh. You know, when speaking to Daniel's closest friends and specifically when reading his diary, I'm reminded of the reflections of Otto Frank, the father of Anne Frank, when he read his daughter's diary. He said that only when reading in a diary did he learn so much about his daughter that he didn't know, even though he spent years in such close proximity to her. So too do we feel that we learned parts about our son, significant parts that we never really knew. This fills us with both great pain and enormous pride at the very same time. On that day, when the Jewish people needed him most, Daniel was totally committed to what he had written to himself when he became an officer. If not me, then who? An entire generation of young fighters, as exemplified by Daniel Hashem Yikom Domo, together with his brother and best friend Yonatan, who also fought bravely and was injured, revealed to us who they really were. A selfless and heroic generation, willing to sacrifice their lives to protect our people, our land, and everything we stand for.